It is Tuesday night. It is 8 o'clock. Do you know where DJ's at? I know where I'm at. I'm here with you. Yes, it's the DJ Roundtable time. I was going to say side, but time. <laughs> Again. And if you're watching this on YouTube, do me a favor. Click that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Make sure you hit that bell because I'm always releasing videos on YouTube, especially the round table. So if you want to get caught up on it, watch some older videos, comment, criticisms, critiques, comments, say stuff. You want to say something? Say down below. We want to hear what you guys think and make sure, please, like, follow, subscribe to the channel. We can see where we go. It's greatly appreciated. Uh, this week we have DJ Brentley back. Uh, he he was uh, yeah. caught up with uh, um, a train oh, oh, uh, problem, taking his daughter for a nice little vacation. Um, speaking of your daughter, where's your uh, where's your boss at? Uh, she's outside playing right now. The street lights aren't on, so she can stay outside. That is fine. I put the dogs in another room so as to not bark and disturb everyone. All right, there you go. Now, as you up in the North Cold area, uh, what's the temperature about you right now? Uh, about 42, 43. Oh, okay. Because we're, uh, we're 54 right now, so down here in the Chicagoland area. So it it's, it's, oh, we got nailed with, jeez. Saturday or? No, snow. Oh, yes. Uh, Sunday, uh, Sunday into Monday? Monday, Monday yeah. It, it, it was insane. Yep. We got hit, too. Yeah, no. Gotta love it. It's Chicago, it's springtime, and it's Wisconsin, it's springtime. It gets snow one day, and then Saturday we I had my gig. It was uh, 82, 83 degrees. I think my van read 85. What, it was a little humid, um, but it was a daytime gig, and then we went out that night. Uh, it was nice to get out and... Uh, to do stuff on a Saturday night after a gig. I was like, wow. So, yeah, I had shorts on and one of my bl many black T-shirts, and <laughs> we went out. Uh, <laughs> and then Saturday, I had a customer meeting, and I had to switch order wearing back to pants again. So it's like, oh, great. You know, Saturday, I get to enjoy it. Sunday, I got to wear pants again and a jacket. <laughs> so, yes, it was, uh, it was a fun weekend. And speaking of weekend, DJ Cool Thing, you had some fun down yeah. there in South Carolina. You want to talk a little bit about uh, your beautiful time at the uh, hot dog stand? It was amazing. I DJed for about seven to eight hours until eight o'clock when we closed the corner. We had so many great people enjoy the music. Um, I kept getting tips. And one cute thing is that there were some little girls that came in close to the end of the night, and they gave me a dollar each for playing Aww, some, some of their favorite that's so, songs. That's so nice. Yeah, and that's they so, enjoy the so music. Cute. And that's so cute. And I, I will be back when school gets out for the summer, like in May, June, July, and August. Like have one Saturday out of each month and DJ there, and it's going to be awesome to provide monthly entertainment. Well, yeah, and good, good for you that you have kind of a monthly gig to go there. Uh, mm -hmm. You and a few other people I know that have, like, residency at places, especially, like, DJ Bruntley, who's always got his residency <laughs> at his <laughs> – at the bars and clubs and stuff. I've always <laughs> seen his stuff, especially uh, his stickers everywhere, uh, which maybe DJ Bruntley should be sending us stickers so we all have your, his sticker. Maybe, you know, he can mail us a sticker. I can do that. It, it, could, it could be nice. <laughs> And I have to actually order another pack because I bur I realized I burned through about 10,000 a semester. So between Winona, Lacrosse, and Stevens Point, it's about 10,000 stickers in, six in five months every run. All right. So you guys watching on either here on Twitch or on What's Up, uh, Jim, uh, or on YouTube. If you want um, look, hold on a second here I got oh my chat went away if you want to have a sticker for DJ Bruntley what you need to do is go on Instagram follow him on Instagram 
and message him and say, hey, uh, I'd like to get a address. I like to get, I like, to, here's my address. I like to get a sticker. Send him a message directly. Do not put it anywhere. I don't want to see addresses down below. I will remove it very quickly because I don't want your personal information out there. So again, go on Instagram, find him on Instagram. If you can't find him, go to his YouTube page. There's links everywhere. You can go follow him on Instagram or follow his journey and he will send you a sticker if you ask for one nicely. Don't demand them. <laughs> and remember, this is something that costs him money. It may cost him a penny or two, but a stamp and stuff like that takes time. So please, you know, ask for a sticker or two, be nice about it, and uh, be professional about it. And again, uh, and if you get those stickers somewhere, make sure you put them up on Instagram and tag him where you're at and tag him where you put your sticker at. You put it on your laptop, you put it on your gear, you put it on something that you own. Just don't put it anywhere. We don't want to deface things. We don't destroy things. But put it on something, and you may maybe back here on my wall of a curtain, <laughs> maybe you may see a, a DJ Brantley sticker up here, or maybe I put it on my forehead. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, there are several locations the, co the college girls like to put them. That's, I'm very again, fond of a few of them. We're G-rated here, so... <laughs> That state, what happened in Vegas stays in Vegas. What happened in lacrosse stays in lacrosse, <laughs> except for all the police body cam shows on YouTube. Can we, so, can we not talk about the police, please? They ruined my gig Saturday night. Ah, uh, well, you know what? Can't cause trouble. Okay, there may have been a few underagers in the bar I was at. That's it. That's it. <laughs> no, sure. That's it wasn't that. They show up. And it, it seems they grabbed the two groups of people with the popular kids, and everybody left with them. Wow. And, I mean, okay, it was only for an hour. I'm not going to complain. You get, they're like, we're done at 2 a.m. instead of 2.15. Cool. Well, it happens. I mean, it went from them yelling and screaming, throwing drinks in the air, to, <laughs> wow. It's like... Yeah, Drug bus when the cops That's come horrible. in. It was terrible. Can't 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 break the law. You gotta follow <laughs> no. and again. You don't want you don't want to get in trouble yourself, so Nope. If people are up to no good, I'd much rather have them gone and have good people come in. <laughs> have people oh, yeah. in trouble or making other people want to leave. So I mean, it is a college town. It's to be expected. Well, and most most towns, especially smaller towns, usually the police departments usually are walking through bars or restaurants every so often. Just making sure no one does anything they're not supposed to. But like before, if you, if you Google a few things like uh, blue ca uh, code blue body cam, blue cam. on YouTube, yeah. oh, uh, there's a couple of them. You put a lacrosse, and <laughs> and as as uh, as a famous uh, law enforcement officer or former law enforcement officer, Don Operator said, he'd love to go lacrosse and do on the ground reporting from there, just because uh, he sees a lot of fun there. So, <laughs> hey, how you doing? Um, Again, if you haven't heard it, uh, if you get a chance to, follow DJ Brentley over on Instagram. Send him a private message asking for one of his stickers. Hey, hey, what's going on? Asking for one of his stickers. He will send you a sticker in the mail and then put it on something that, you know, it's yours. Not on something, on, on nothing that's not yours. And take a picture of it, post it on Instagram, and tag him on it. So, you know, maybe it will show up at one of my gigs, and I have, I'm holding it at one of my gigs, and it's at my gig, but he's there too, so you never know. See, if I, see, if I had a DJ Brentley sticker, I would go, I would sm put it smack down on my laptop. There you go. Give me your addresses. I'll get stickers out this weekend. I'll give you a Solstice Entertainment sticker. You can throw it on there too. Yep, there you, now you just heard it. Matt's going to get stickers too, too. Now, Matt also does neon. And if you guys ever want to get neon signs, I have one for my business. Uh, I've used it at wedding shows. I would definitely say Matt is the man. There you go, DJ Salsas. Oh, Matt, I gotta give you my ad. Well, if Matt and I would Matt, wow. Matt and Brentley's next to each other. So, uh, yes, ma'am. I'm probably the only DJ on this uh, show tonight that doesn't have any stickers or merchandise. Well, I, I, you know, Hunter, you and I, I, I guess we got to get stickers. I guess we're the uh, the slackers here. <laughs> and I guess. I guess. <laughs> New charger. So, 
what we were uh, a couple of things that we were talking about last week. You weren't here. You missed out on that. One of the things was asked uh, previously. We didn't get. We we went through over last week. Was why did you become a DJ? So DJ Bradley, we know how you became a DJ, but why did you become a DJ? Why? Wow. You know, when I was a kid, it was just fun. Because and of you. Okay. <laughs> because of your daughter. <laughs> but when I went back in the booth here in lacrosse and left the club I'd been at three nights a week, I, I, I could have gone back to managing clubs and DJing part-time. But I talked to my kid and I'm like, and she was only five at this point. And I'm like, either A, I go back to working 60, 70 hours a week and I'm not home as much. Or B, I DJ, I can do the bars and clubs, I can do some weddings. I certainly wasn't charging a lot back then because I didn't have, I just broken, you know, broken away from a club, broken away from a company. And with my daughter, I'm like, you make the call here. And she's like, I'd rather have you home. And I'm like, that, okay, let's see how this goes. And let her know we could be flat broke eating ramen, pasta, or all that. No toys, no candy, no extra stuff. Or this could go knock on wood the way it's going thus far and been a very ideal job for me. Because like yesterday, or yeah, yesterday, Monday, we didn't have, you know, schools got called here. There was no driving around at 7 a.m. yesterday. It wasn't happening. They hadn't even sent the trucks out yet. And then by 1 o'clock, it was all starting to melt. But there was a snow day. The The average parent's going to have to be like, one of us has to take off. And rather than do that, I don't have to think about it. If she forgets something at school, gets sick, I can run there, and I'm not missing out on anything. Same with going to her school events outside of Saturdays and some of the Friday weddings I have because I'm doing clubs for the most part in the off season and even into the summer, I don't miss much of it. Or I, I haven't missed any of her school stuff really. And except for one thing we missed because I had I had to drive out of town. But aside from that, it's been a more ideal parenting job outside of my sleep schedule, which who needs it? I can sleep in the car or uh I can't remember what movie is. Plenty of time to sleep when I'm dead. Cool. I'll get there at some point. But it made it much easier for me not to have to rely on as many people to take care of her. I don't have to send her to daycare. And that was the biggest decision I made. Our biggest I want factor. Daycare. I want to daycare. I want to daycare. And it sucked. Yes, it did. And with that, it was like when she was in daycare, it, she wasn't happy with it. I'm like, why are we doing this if I'm home? Forget it. And My since then, I had to clean up all the toys, and I was literally like five or six. And all the little kids who made the mess didn't have to do it. I'm sorry, it wasn't there. But now she has to clean her room. And... I the, I was the oldest yeah, this is what I get. And in return, I mean, and granted, it's given us a really great relationship, which it made it all the better. Luckily, things have flowed the right way where. In the off season, my club gigs to support. I mean, and I'm actually saving. Amazingly, I'm actually well. I should shouldn't say I'm saving. I'm spending the extra money I have this club season, unlike other ones in 2020 and rebounding in 21. 22 is really nice. Where I'm like, I have money now to. So I bought the flex. I have its case coming. My total will be here next week. I kind of went overboard. You know, we went when we went to the Wisconsin Dells. So, you know, spent overboard on her because you know she it was her spring break you don't get many, very many opportunities to do that and doing this really opened up all those avenues plus teaching djs working with them mentoring the the ones in our crew if i'm working a nine to five i'm just a part-time dj if i'm able to teach these guys maybe they take it further than i have and they get good with it or it takes care of them and helps them whatever so the big takeaway is you did this, you, you, you got really into DJing because of not only make it pay some decent money, but also it gives you the flexibility so you can spend time with your daughter, help raise yeah. your daughter. And that's, that's part of parenting. It's, it's a hard balance as a parent myself. It's a hard balance to, to, to do things. And when our daughter was younger and we had to do stuff with her, 
you know, sometimes when I was working full time for corporations, working 50, 55, 60 hours a week, it was very difficult. So having that flexibility of being a business owner and being a successful business owner, it helps out a lot. And it helps out with, you know, especially with your daughter, that you're able to spend time with her and focus on her and raise her way that it is best. And again, she, you know, every time you post stuff on, on social media, stuff like that, of you and your daughter, it's always cute. And she's, she's a fun young lady. And again, we've seen her plenty of times here on the show and, she is a she's a very uh very 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 well uh uh well put together young lady and I, again I, I give you kudos for that and Thank I you. hope that she you know continues that into her woman when she's a young when she's a young lady in her twenties and thirties and when you become a grandpa uh, DJ Bradley <laughs> you can take one over, day you can uh, take over your, your, your grandkids will have the same good nurturing and the same base yeah that you can deal with and say hey. I, I did well, and that's what you ho- hope for. That's what we hope for our daughter. That's what we hope for. Uh, we, we we see that with our granddaughter for the most part. Uh, some things, you know, it's like okay, fine, great, you know. But anytime you're a parent or a grandparent, you, all you want is the best for your family and your kids. And having that job opportunity to do that, I think it's 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 very very good. You know, one day in the future, like whenever my brother and sister in law have kids, I can teach them how to DJ. There you go. See, and there's not many jobs that actually can be as fun as this is. I know. And where you could kind of, no matter what, lose yourself in the beats if you need to. By all means. That's kind of something right there that, you know, like going through my breakup. It was like, yeah, I'm not in the best of spirits, but I can always dive back into six hours of just mixing and practicing and not think about it or play what I want to play or prep the sets I want to play. So. And that's, that's, that, that's the fun part. And you know, it's, it's always good to know that you have this, you know, you have your background you can go back into, if you want to get in back into management and to run in a restaurant, run into a bar, and dealing with everything, ordering stuff, and dealing with you know alcohol, and you know ordering from different suppliers, and you know that part of the business. But the fun part is the DJ part. You don't, you're not, you know, have to worry about hey, I got to be here for this truck showing up, and it, it, it does, the, the sucky part of it doesn't matter if retail or a restaurant or anything like that. Uh, deal with it. Our, we have our own, you know, headaches we got to deal with. <laughs> And you oh, know, yeah. buying gear and getting equipment, I'm glad you're getting your toad. I'm kind of jealous, but also not jealous because I can't figure out a way to. I, I keep looking at ramps for uh, the sprinter, and it's like I don't know. I, I, I look at them, and the uplifter company, I say they're like between three hundred and eleven hundred dollars for a ramp. So, I've seen a couple yeah, for about four hundred and fifty. What was that? And- they're not. They're. they're uh, I've seen a couple rated to hold eight hundred pounds, four hundred fifty bucks. From where? And that's. I can't. It was online. I, I did a big search. I've got all my stuff saved, and I'll let you know if I buy them or not. Yeah. But I'm gonna check them out and see what it, see how it all holds up. Because you you have you have what you have a kind of line right? Yeah. Uh. One. It's either a, it's either a one fifty or a two fifty. I can't remember, but it's huge, and so it's. Up in my thighs, how high the, to get everything up into it? The, the, the Sprinter's probably a couple inches taller than a Conline or a uh, Chevy uh, okay. uh, van uh, or GMC. Uh, GMC, uh, was it uh, GMC Sahara? And then okay. uh, the, the Chevy is the uh, Express. Because uh, I had Chevy Express. And the Sprinter is, I want to say, about maybe three inches, four inches, a little bit taller. Then that that far is where the where the the deck is at. Yeah, not not much taller, but it is you know it has a little height to it, and that's the thing is that I don't I know the totematics with a TV and everything that you're, you're putting stuff gear in there and lock it in there, it weighs a, a few pounds, and I know a couple guys who built um, um, Elite Entertainment uh, out of Kentucky. Uh, uh, he has he built a bunch of uh, different uh, displays and. Um, you know, he built his own booth. The guy built his own booth, and beautiful work is all that. 
he has a um, a minivan, and so he he's able to lift up. It's not a high lift up, so you can get the front wheels up, lift the front wheels up, and then put it in and lift the rest of the way up in there. Uh, versus our vans are much higher off, so it, it'd be like you know Matt Matt has his Tahoe, he won't be able to do it, but he does have a trailer. See, that's also why I got the forty two, and not. Because if anything happens in my van, I measured my ba- I measured my doors in the minivan, so I can conceivably do what you just said: pick the one end up and then haul it up in there. And that's why I went with. I, and also, I didn't want the gargantuan one. one. I kind my the I, I would I would if I was going to do it, I would go to the fifty five. I would do my business partner has a fifty five, and I felt like I was swimming in it. Still, I, I just felt well, way I'm, too big. I'm a big guy. I'm not a small guy, so you know it's like <laughs> I'm a I'm a fat guy, so you know I I, I need the room. I need the width. <laughs> and and plus, if I'm only using a flex ten at weddings, it, it, I don't need all that space. And by the way, if anybody gets a flex ten, like the DDJ one thousand, I'm not impressed. No. Well, I'm still rocking with the, the wheels. I'm still rocking with my 400, so I'm pretty much good on that. The the jog wheels, they seem even, they seem almost at times when I'm working with it worse than the 1000. Like they're just not great, like not compared to the RZ or the SC. I think maybe it's, and we'll talk, we're going to talk about gear in a minute or two because we have a special, uh, Report here from someone who went to NAM. We're going to talk about NAM in a second or two, uh, but I think it, maybe it's weight concern and weight savings to make sure it's not too heavy for DJs because they don't want to make it. Because I can tell you, the XZ is heavy, and when you put it in a case like that, you know, Tracy and I lift it because it's so long. I can lift it up, but it just, my arms are stretched all the way, and I lift up. I can't really. You know, get off a cart and try and lift up up there. So both yeah. of us grab it, put up. Yeah, there. It's, like, it's like my yeah, it's like my SR2. I got to hold my hand, my hand, my handle like that and put my like that and carry in. <laughs> See, my RZ is like that with my hard case, and I I wish they still made the RZ. I honestly do. It's such a better deck. Well, Feel again, wise, again, sometimes it's it's weight. Sometimes it's manufacturing. They decide, hey, you know what? We're going to change it. Because this material works better or it has better work. Yeah. We're not, unfortunately, we're not pioneer. We're not part behind the scenes. The engineers there design certain things. They look at things. And also, it could be price, too. To keep the price at a certain level, they may have to do one thing or another. You know, that's, it, again, it, it's a decision they make. And, for, uh, you know, the unfortunate or fortunate way you can look at it is that we, um, we as the consumers of it, had to deal with it. I still think Pioneer, for equipment-wise, is one of the best manufacturers out there. I think they have some of the best electronics out there, the best parts. I do think Newmark uh, with Denon, the Denon side of stuff, is the really good stuff. And I don't think Denon is – the old Denon was equal to Pioneer. I think they're just a step below now because Newmark – Newmark's more middle-of-the-road. More, Newmark's good middle-of-the-road equipment. They have some really good stuff. It's good middle-of-the-road, good pricing. Um Hercules just came out, new controller, a bunch of new stuff, and NAM was this past week. And who else in California do we know, a DJ? I don't know. What DJ we know lives in California, in Orange County? And so envious. I hear. Both, uh, what, hour, hour and a half? Right under me. Right uh, under me here Disneyland on the chat. Right Anaheim and NAM? Try, try like 25 minutes, but yeah. Oh, I'm uh, sorry, 25 minutes. Well, again, tra- I'm looking about traffic, LA traffic. Well, things for traffic. So you drove the half hour, 45 minutes, three days, whatever it was, to NAM. So, Matt, I know we wanted to talk about this. What was some of the stuff that you found that was absolutely awesome? Tell us some of the things you saw that you so, think are great, some of the things you saw that you were like, eh, maybe, and some things you're like, oh, uh, a total miss. All right, so twelfth uh, year in a row going to Nam, um, except for COVID, obviously because it was canceled. But twelfth year in a row, um, only only was able to go Thursday because I had events Friday and Saturday. Uh, it'll be back to its normal time next year in January, back to the four days and the full show. So it was bigger than last year, but still not as big as the normal show. Um, we started so base boss sent us there um i have some contacts at base boss and they always give me the artist passes so 
uh, they were free, which was nice. Um, so uh, first place we visited was the three demo rooms right back to back, which was RCF, Pioneer, and Base Boss. They were all right next to each other. Um, I heard the Base Boss demo first. That one was pretty nuts. They have all new lines. Um, they're the same speakers, same cabinets, but with new amplifiers and power modules and new processing and DSPs all built in. Now, you'd think that'd be a good thing. It was for the tops. The subs didn't seem to hit as low as what I've heard from Bass Boss in the past. What about uh, the it, Kraken? The Kraken's still there, or do they have a new improved Kraken? It was there. It just wasn't as... It, it wasn't as bonkers as it was in 2020. when it really? was. Really? So I don't know if maybe they had some tuning that was weird. They finally... All the speakers are now networkable, so before they used to have to jerry-rig like iPod jacks and... It was a nightmare. Now they have a proper audio engineer and everything's networked so they can easily just have one song pan all across the speakers and subs, just click whichever ones you want to hear. So that was cool. Um, definitely loud. Um, I don't think they're worth it for the price, either their subs or the tops. Uh, they do have these new micro mains that are, I don't know, I think they're like sixes or eights, uh, tiny little speakers and they have the ridiculous bass. Um, out of those small things. So, would, so they, would that be a good speaker for like cocktail hour or you had a remote cocktail? I, you, you, you don't want to invest in anything base boss for cocktail hour. It's really more production. Um, but even then, it's there's better options for the price, I think. Um, so, moving on, we saw. Did you see what uh, like map price or retail price was for those? Uh, they're speakers? the same. It's the same pricing as before. The tops, the main tops, the DB12 is $34.99. The 15 inch sub is 24.99. The single 18, I think, is 34. The single 21 is like four, and their duels start at like six. So at that rate, you're better off just getting an RCF dual sub. Oh wait, um, wait, They're, both Hunter and DJ Brantley are like, what? Uh, what? What's the price of a Kraken they get running right now? 17k. Wow. Not four, not see, four 18 inch woofers, right? Four twenty-one inch woofers. Sorry, four twenty-one inch woofers. The problem, the though, pounds. the problem though is you can't use it at like a prom or on a regular size stage because it's about four and a half feet tall. It's huge, um, and it's just it's massive. It's near impossible to move, like transport wise. Um, oh, you need, you need a truck with a lift. Oh yeah, um, you so, forklifts. Yeah, you're, you're, it's just you're, you're not just walk, putting in back of your uh, Honda Lux Civic, you know. <laughs> so. Then we, we wandered over to RCF, got the demo there. Um, new stuff from RCF is, uh, so the NX line, which is what I had, I ended up returning it because the 10 inch was too small. Um, I wanted more handles than just one, but I'm glad I returned it because they announced an NX 932, which is the NX line. It's basically the same NXL towers I have with the three inch uh, compression driver now in a single box uh, traditional unit. So it's got a three inch compression driver, um, which is their new like top end one wooden box. It's not even on their website yet. They just had it there uh, downstairs in the booth. So that's supposed to come out in September. So I'll definitely look into that. Um, the TTs sound like crap. I don't know what some of these DJs are thinking. Those TT505818s, they both sound garbage. Uh, everyone in the group with me agreed that they don't sound good. Um, Maybe for a small little cocktail, sure, but when you're trying to pump a lot of volume, it's a tiny box. It's not going to sound good. So uh, there was that. They released a new, the NXL44. They now have an NXW44, which is basically the same, but it's a wide coverage pattern. So instead of the, the current NXL that I have is meant for concerts because it's only a 30 degree dispersion vertically. So basically it hits out straight up top and then goes down. So you're not losing anything up to too high um, or anything. That was cool. Uh, they didn't demo any subs. They had like their traditional no new subs from RCF. They do have a new, um, they have an 8008, which has got the new finish on it that the um, rest of the NX line has, which is pretty nice. Matches the same grill. Doesn't hit as deep. I heard it last year. Um, they do have a 9000, a 9006, which is one model up from my 8006s. Um, which I didn't even know existed, uh, but either way, it's still um, crazy. Uh, what else? Then we went to Pioneer. Um, Morgan Page was playing at Pioneer, one of my favorite DJs, so I stuck around for a half hour. Um, a buddy, a friend of a friend of mine did the stage design for Pioneer, um, not downstairs, the upstairs uh, demo room. 
uh, sounded like garbage in there. Pioneer does not know how to make speakers. Um, this whole XPRS line, do not even think about investing in it. Um, very, very harsh, very mm -hmm. harsh, no mids. Um, it even, yeah, it just didn't sound good. Um, it so was okay. Sounded okay. So, in, uh, in your opinion, it, in your opinion, it's not, in your opinion, none of the speakers you liked. Yeah, and, and, and again, this is this is this is what Matt thinks. This is Matt's opinion. So I'm not I'm not sponsored. I got the free shirt. I got the free shirt. <laughs> uh, you um, know, Pioneer. Oh. You know, again, there, there are speakers uh, I saw uh, on YouTube. Uh, DJ J. Braddon uh, put up with a uh, Pioneer. Uh, did a walk around of their booth on the floor of Nam. Uh, they had their 12s and they had their 18-inch uh, subs there to set up. It looks nice. Again, I'm not there in person. I can't hear it myself, so I can't say what I think. Matt's Ooh. not a fan for it. He thinks that, you know, the sound is not there the way he likes the sound. It, again, it's Matt's opinion. Uh, Matt Matt likes certain things. Everybody likes certain things. One Here's person, what I'm DJ Brainley may hear it, may say, I love it, or cool thing may hear it. You know, Hunter, he may say, it, it, it's, it's not as good, you know, as JBL's. We're not there. We, we didn't hear it, so I don't know. I do know this. Here in Chicagoland, um, Marquee is coming up. Uh, the guy who runs Marquee, uh, KC, he also does wedding shows, which I've done his wedding shows. He has a DJ meetup coming up very soon, um, and he's going to have J-Maz there for lighting. And they're going to be demoing some stuff, and I think some stuff from... They had at Nam at this demo, so I'm I'm debating if I'm going to go or not. They just had Pioneer last time last month. This month is June, so I I might go to it to give a report here. But again, it's what we see, what our opinion is, and what we feel. And Matt going there, I think that it is awesome that you have this. You you walk around there. There's a lot to take in there, and all these different manufacturers. Let me give um, you the other quick quick rundown of the other couple booths. Um, Got demos from LD Systems, uh, all their new, Ooh. the new Mauis. Um, I don't think they had the subs turned on. All of those speakers sound phenomenal, though. Um, the 44s, yeah. the 44s yeah. are. Yeah. Okay. Speaking of LD Systems, pretty soon after the summer, make sure you all be on the lookout for a product unboxing of the LD Systems Icoa Sub 15A. Yeah. Um, they're, they're, the Maui 44 G2s, I finally got to hear those. They sound really good. Uh, I Like I said, I think they had all the subs turned off or really low because there was no low-end excursion. Uh, the, the towers sound great. Um, Meyer, Meyer was the booth that I was really impressed with. My buddy has a Meyer system. Uh, they're a local company out of Berkeley. Uh, they make very, very high-end concert grade, top-of-the-line stuff. I mean, it's they're, the tops that they were demoing were... Uh, like 3,500 now. Yeah, they were like 5,800 per speaker. Um, so they're they're pretty high end. They sounded incredible. Probably the clearest speakers I've ever heard. Um, so is QS that a new speaker you're going to go to and get for it? Uh, no. I you, like, you like loud. The, you like loud the problem. Loud. <laughs> the problem is those speakers are made for professionals. So if you don't run them properly, they don't have all that fancy DSP and filtering and limiting and all that built in. You can you can screw them up if you don't run them right. So you really need an audio engineer. Um, they don't even have a volume knob. That's just starting with it. But uh, the new the new QSC uh, L system did not sound very uh, appealing. Uh, it was a very I've heard the KLAs. The KLAs sound better. The this new system was not ideal in my opinion. Um, that's pretty much. Uh, DOS Audio had a really cool cardioid sub. Uh, it was a dual 15 with a 12 in the back, so literally no bass behind the sub, a lot in front. They also have a dual 18 with a 15 in the back that's flyable. That was pretty cool. They didn't have it there to demo. Uh, what else was there? Uh, and then, like, product-wise, we went downstairs. Uh, yeah, the Hercules controller is pretty cool, the one with the, the vinyl. Um, it felt really sturdy, did not feel like... Seven hundred dollars. Um, I have a Hercules controller, and it basically felt as sturdy as that. With pretty heavy, having played with the Rain One, this kind of felt similar to the um, the. I don't know. However, you do that. I don't scratch, so it's not for me. Uh, lighting. I don't think a DJ was there. Um, I, maybe we just completely missed him. Cheve was there. They they have a new. Um, further emphasizing people, further further encouraging people's laziness to not learn DMX. Uh, their new ILS system now comes with like a standalone controller that you can 
basically use like a sound switch, but it's meant for ILS lights. Um, so it's got all sorts of presets and everything uh, that you can use. They were demoing that. It's pretty cool. Um, they had their bubble hazer again, which still uh, looks like they finally improved it and made the fans actually blow the bubble hazes up. Uh, I had the first version of it and the bubbles filled with haze just went straight to the ground. Uh, Pioneer booth was cool. A lot of fun stuff. Punch a bunch of people there as usual. Uh, Gator, um, Gator, which uh, I added to my collection. Uh, they have little uh, frost things. Last year I got the this Gator, so I had to get the new Gator. Um, they now make cables. Um, we met their audio engineer there. They now make very high end but very affordable cables. Uh, really thick, really nice cables. They had a couple new bags, some rack mount stuff. And yeah, in terms of like, that's pretty much it, really. Um, RCF. So if was... you had, if you had a look at, you know, the controllers and stuff like that, you know, Pioneer again. I really feel Pioneer um, with some of the releases they have that they they kind of stepped their game up a little bit with some stuff. You just have I, so, I know, many, uh, so many. Brentley is not a like... fan for the 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 oh, actual Pioneer. wheels, but I think that a lot of their equipment is is still very good for it is, but. You're saying the Hercules stuff also was very impressive as well for um, for their setup for the new controller they had come out, huh? Yeah, I mean Pioneer's got uh, there. There's so many controllers and so many people playing with them at the booths, and I was like, what makes this one different from all the rest of the ones they make? And it's just like, I don't know. It's a it's way too fancy of a toy. I don't like the effects. Not I personally wouldn't use a Pioneer just because I don't like them. Um, I've heard nothing but I I, I mean. I've heard horror stories of controllers overheating, not working. I don't have to worry about like overheating. I have a MacBook Pro that's got a fan from 2011 that is a beast of a fan, and it's meant to be used outdoor in 100 degree weather. Um, my computer's never overheated. Knock on wood. My controller's never overheated. Um, I don't know. So I, I'm just not a. The, they're, they look cool. I mean, they're thousand dollar toys. Cool. I just I don't see how a, a different control like they come out with a new controller at like once a month it seems the opus quad was there that was cool looking um i didn't know what to do with it but um jetpack was there they they had a little dj competition um oh the coolest uh, another cool thing we saw it's called a there's a company that makes uh you may have heard of them they're called twinkly they used to do christmas tree lights uh where it would have an app that you just point at your christmas tree and it would ai pixel map it uh, to the tree and then you could run any design on it any image any video or anything now they have that in an eight by eight curtain version that you can connect up to four, I think, together, um, and it'll pixel map. Basically, think of one of those twinkly curtain drapes that the kind of lower class DJs have. Now this is like kind of a professional-ish version of it. Uh, it's not mappable with Resolume or any video software yet. It's all proprietary with their app. Uh, but I got the guy's card. That was kind of cool. Uh, there's one other company called AQ Lighting. They have some. I think I'm pretty sure they're just out of China. They're based in Ventura here in California, but they, all their stuff I've seen either on Facebook or straight out of China, they had some interesting stuff. Uh, same kind of tubes that Rick Webb is trying to hawk on everybody, the, the LED tubes that are cheap and plastic and have a, a weird base that's black. Um, so that's pretty much it. We were only there one day. I, I couldn't get there till 12. So I was there the full six hours at, at 530. They lift all the decibel regulations uh, for the demo rooms upstairs. And then on the show floor at 630, I think. So really the show ends at six. But if you have like an invite from one of the booths, um, the convention's really open till like nine. So um, you could still walk around. There's concerts outside. Yamaha had the main stage uh, sponsored this year. That was pretty cool. Sounded really good. Um, but yeah, Bass Boss, I posted it on my Instagram story. They did like a full, a full out demo with everything. And I mean, it was insane. It was, it was pretty nuts. Like the, yeah, but again, it, it wasn't as deep as, cause I had them play the same song. I showed them the video from 2020, uh, of when they released Unleashed the Kraken. I played the, I had them play the same song on the Kraken and it didn't sound as impressive as it used to. So I don't know if there's new DSP that they put in there. Uh, or they're focusing more on just insane, like low mid bass instead of super low bass. But um, I'll still take my RCFs any day. And that's my report. Well, thank you for your report and your 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 glowing reviews. And... I'm definitely getting I'm definitely getting those uh, those NXL or the the NX nine thirty two when they come out in September for sure. As my oh. name. Oh, the meantime, DJ Fire, Nathan. Hey guys, I have Twinkly Christmas lights. 
how's everyone doing, by the way? It's been a while since I've been on. Yes, you know. Tell them, uh, tell them, uh, come back on, yeah. you come back on here, man. And I keep sending you to the thing. I know you're busy with work and everything. Yeah, we missed you on the show. Tell, tell them, uh, back on the show, man. Tell them Shed's, uh, uh, I, uh, I got a new light from Shed's. They, they sent me a light for free to review. Oh, they, they, they noticed me. I, I name dropped Nathan, though. I, I named him like I'm friends with DJ Fire. And uh, like, oh, would you like? And so I, I have a free moving head in my uh, in my garage that I got to unbox. And, and there you go. Well, well, well I'm, I'm, never that that on, uh, yeah, I'm never, yeah, I'm never that on fucking. YouTube and stuff like that. And Rick, Rick Webb sent me uh, some both lighting stuff, too, to uh, review on YouTube. So uh, that just got here today. So I'll check those out. I got the, the IR4s just because I'm curious how they uh, perform. Yeah, I'm never that lucky to get products in review. Hey, it took me, took me, I started YouTube in 2018. It took me this long to get anything free. <laughs> well, Projectogram, I, I've, I've always, Projectogram has been a long time supporter of the channel. So speaking of which, I need I, to make I love Projectogram. They, they do awesome stuff for their, uh, and their customer service is really phenomenal. I had a problem with one of the motion gobos and um, I, I got a hold of them and then they're like, oh, we can't figure it out. Give us a, a day or so. Within two days, I got a new rendering of it. it worked fine, worked perfect. Uh, they asked me about you. I told him Sheds. All I, I told Sheds about you. Okay, so they he 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 uh, gave him a thumbs up for you. So good. But yeah, uh, Nathan, I know you're busy with all the stuff going on, especially the landscaping, your landscaping business down there. But yeah, we definitely gotta get you back in here, brother. Uh, gotta get you back on the show and talking. I saw your gig log for the uh, uh, the prom and stuff like that. Looked awesome. I, I wanted to hear from you about that stuff so look forward to that and then uh, of course always if you guys get a chance to make sure you go to DJ Fire's YouTube channel he always has reviews and then Nathan uh, 343 Studios he does reviews on there and he has his lawn care business as well so he has a couple channels make sure you look for them and look through them all but DJ Fire he does do reviews uh, on DJ Fire and Gig Logs, as well as Nathan Three Four Three Channel, which he does uh, reviews in there, and he reviews a lot of stuff, everything from like pumps to dance lights to a uh, bunch of different gear. Uh, he's got a new studio set up, and he has a wedding this weekend. Oh, nice, dude! Congratulations, good, good, good. I'm actually off this weekend. My next wedding's not until the fifth. How are you off? I have four this weekend: a prom and three weddings. Well, there you go. <sighs> Never my, next, my next gig is not until school gets out. Now that's at Sam's Corners. I probably that much uh, book for, for this year. Well, you, I've got you, four uh, club really... gigs this week, and it ends with senior pub crawl for UWL Saturday night. And I'm going back to the club that basically threw me back into the booth head first when I was here in Lacrosse when I first moved here, and. Instead of getting the regular DJ set 10 to 2, I got to load it at 6, and I'm starting by 7 o'clock and going till 2-ish. And they have a very strict format. Dance music, EDM, house. There's no anything throw, else. Throw some James hype on there. I got plenty of good house. Oh, I've already I, I've already pulled out Ferrari. I've already pulled out, uh, uh what is it? Uh, <laughs> There's a... There's a new one by Martin Garrix. It's called Cocoon. Um, it's uh, it's on DMS. Cocoon, okay. uh, dope. Very hard, hard bass hit. There you go. There, there's your homework. <laughs> I'm a house, oh, been, I'm a house set. I love house music, but uh, in in doses because it gets annoying after a while. I've been really going through because I've been going back and you know with a couple of the clubs I'm at that are more house and EDM based. I've been really reworking my crates the last few months. Kind of knowing I was gearing up to go back to Legends for the first time in God since right before we closed in 2020. And so, and I've been to their sister bar, the Lacrosse Beer House, but that's a college party bar like Animal House is. I'm playing, you're playing country, you're playing rock, you're playing pop. Occasionally you might throw, you know, titanium in or something to be a little different, but. Going back to Legends, it's definitely a straight club game. And it's and it's plug and play if I want it to be. All I have to bring is the SP2 from a record box. So I have my sampler pads and I can use the CDJs and the Nexus 9. But I think I'm still going to use my Flex just because of how hard I am on equipment. 
and knowing how many DJs of hands have been on their gear, I don't want to be the one who breaks it. See, at Sam's Corner, I can't play any remixes or house music or anything like that. I have to play regular radio versions of songs. Wait, 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 wait. Do I have we are our favorite? He, he's connecting. Yeah, he's connecting. Woo-hoo-hoo. Holy hey. Spikies, look who's. Ah. What is up, guys? What What's going up? on, sir? How is beautiful Texas today? You know, it was a good day. Nice weather. A little windy. Can't complain about it. Well, it's better than up here. <laughs> You guys in California, Texas, and South Carolina get a little better weather than us uh, Midwestern boys. So <laughs> we have oh, there's still snow on the ground here. We still have snow. Today was a high. Are you serious? It, it, snowed here Monday, it snowed here Monday night. Uh, well, Sunday night into Monday. We got like a foot wow. in lacrosse Sunday into Monday. Here's what the weather is tomorrow here for Conway. Tomorrow's temperature for Conway, South Carolina is 85 degrees. I think our high is 50 tomorrow. It's supposed to hit like 50, 57, 58 tomorrow, and then go up to 70. And then this weekend, like uh, Saturday, the high is only like 45. So you were kind of getting up to like the 70, 75 kind of oh, area. Yeah. So it's real fit. I'm feeling real nice. Probably get to the to the 80s here uh, very, very soon. Just Saturday, I was, I was telling them um, Saturday, uh, my gig, on, on, um, when I left – the gig, it was like 82, 83. My truck, my van said 85. Uh, it had a little humidity, but it was nice and warm. We, went, we, we had daytime gig, went home, changed, put shorts on, put my, you know, my one of my famous black t-shirts on, went out, was enjoying the, all the beautiful fresh air, uh, had all the windows down in my truck, had uh, the roof popped open, and then all this beautiful area, and driving around, and it's like, in the set in the seventies, I was like, ah, you know, later at night, and then Sunday we had a customer meeting, had wear pants and had to put a jacket on because it was raining and cold. It's like, ah, oh, man, really? <laughs> and then just uh, teasing you a little talking bit in the chat too. <laughs> uh, he's uh, talking about all his stuff, so his lawn care stuff. Uh, he's so busy right now with, with his uh, lawn care business, and uh, but he does have a wedding this uh, Saturday, so. You know, hopefully we'll get him back here again. And where are you off to, sir? Are you going? Where you, you're going to? Uh, you're going to Whataburger, right? <laughs> I already ate, but uh, that's a good, oh, uh, see, good idea. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Whataburger is always a good idea. Now I'm headed home, so I'm just driving back home. So I'm just keeping the eyes on the road, though. You know, well, there you. Must... I'm, at a, I'm at a red light right now, so no, I, good, sir. Uh, <laughs> I, I will. T- I will tell you this. Uh, Tracy, when she worked for the, uh, one of the companies she worked for before, they were based in Houston. I got a chance to go to Houston. I did have one burger. I would say it's a, it's a decent burger, but Tracy loves the apple pies from there. They're pretty good, yeah. Yeah, apple they, pies are pretty good. The best apple pies. She misses them. I'll say, don't get me wrong. I do. I'm a Texan. I do enjoy Whataburger. burger. I really do like it. Um, do I think it's a little bit overhyped when it comes to the actual, like, taste of the burger and the food? I do a little bit. It's kind of more of just like a – it's almost like a staple, almost like a – it's like a I don't, it's just become a Texas thing, so everyone's like, yeah, whatever. It's very, very good, though. Don't get me wrong. It is very good. Well, remember, Whataburger is owned by a Chicago-based company. So <laughs> You tell me every single time. You're never going to let me forget it. <laughs> But you know they, they keep it separate. They keep it good. They keep it Texas. I know it's Texas. They've done it well. A little bit in Louisiana. A little bit. Um, they're they're around. Uh, are, they, are they in Arizona too, or New Mexico, or uh, Florida? Um, definitely Florida. I think Florida is. Well, looks like we lost. State them. that has the Florida. next, the next highest amount compared to Texas. You guys still got me? Oh yeah, we got you back now. Hopefully, hopefully, yeah, uh, Whataburger, hopefully, Whataburger expands throughout the whole U.S. I do know this. I just saw an article in um, I, I went it, uh, online. I can't remember who it was from. Uh, I want to say one of the uh, news channels here, but uh, Bull Jangles. They're growing up Bull Jangles up here in Chicagoland. Three stores to start off with. 
uh, in the suburbs to try it out, see if it works really well in Chicago. So I love we'll have Bojangles, which I know, I know the Southern people have Bojangles. I'm about to say, I've been to a Bojangles in yeah. South Carolina. <laughs> that was the first time I've ever been was in South Carolina. And I had me, uh, had to get myself a good, uh, what was it, a, a Bowberry biscuit, right? Yeah, Bowberry. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's yeah. what Bowberry biscuit. Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty Never heard of what you guys are talking about. Uh, Mr. Bojangles. Mr. Bojangles. We have a great place called yeah. Bojangles. Yeah, you have In N Out Burger out there. And, you know, In N Out Burger keeps going further and further east. So we, I, have, we have In-N-Out, yeah, down in Texas. I always love, yeah, yeah, I always love, in Texas. I always love their fried chicken. But <laughs> In-N-Out Burger, here's the thing. That this is, I give them kudos for this. They have a rule. They will not open a restaurant that's too far away from one of their processing centers and distribution centers because they want to make sure the meat is fresh as possible when it hits those locations. Culver's does the same thing. Now, up here, like, you know, Wisconsin, Illinois, uh, Texas has them too. Culver's, that's a oh, Wisconsin based yeah. uh, company. Yeah, and South Dakota has one, like yeah. up in Spain. Culver's is famous for custard and burgers, and Culver's Culver's also is a high quality, and they take their time going across the country with stuff. But Culver's is also really good. And we're talking about food all of a sudden here. <laughs> this might sound sacrilegious. I don't like Culver's. What? I mean, nope. as a DJ, it's always good to get something to eat what? before a, before a gig. You don't want a butter I, burger? I'm sorry, but the way they cook them, you get these burnt. The, the whole edge of it's burnt and crunchy. You get crispy edges. That's that's a smash burger. Uh no, no, no. <laughs> uh, honestly, oh, and, and this might be crazier. I would take a quick trip burger over a Culver's burger. What? Oh yeah. I, I'm sorry, but as with as many gigs going to and from clubs that I get where I ditch the kid at six o'clock with her mom and now I've got two hours to get you know to Steven's point and get food in me there's not many options and of them quick trip rakes up there over McDonald's over a lot of the crap that you can grab on the road and there's two quick trips the quick trip he's talking yep. about actually spells out quick trip and you know it actually spells it not QT. If you're you're used to QT, we have a KWIK. Yes, QT in the South is for a quick trip up north. I've been to both, and they're totally different. <laughs> yeah, QT, that's it. I was, I was about to say no burgers at QT. I, I was like, I don't know about that one. Ah, <laughs> uh, but we also here we we have here in the Midwest, especially they came to Chicago uh, past couple years. It's Casey's. They're Iowa base and they're known for their pizza, which is I wouldn't recommend. Heartburn in a box. I wouldn't say Heartburn it's the best pizza in, in the world, but that's what they're famous for. They're famous for their pizza. Uh but they do have good great customer service. Uh they do have a lot of uh the locations here. They um really have uh nice locations. And um I get rewards from get, buying monster there, so I'm not gonna complain. So <laughs> see so, I've got the quick trip coward. Yeah. And there's not many in my market, but you have to go to – occasionally we have to take gigs in Iowa. And that's – Quick Trip really isn't there so much. And nope, it's Casey's, it's Casey's. everywhere. Yep, and they Quick Trip's in Wisconsin and, and Minnesota. Yep. And then you get into Holiday in Minnesota, yep. in Wisconsin. Quick Trip – I mean, uh, Casey's is Il Northern Illinois and Iowa. So – and Nebraska, too. Because they bought – when they, they bought uh, – not the Bucky's down in Texas, but it's Bucky's here, Buchanan Energy. They bought them out of Nebraska. That's who bought Exxon Mobil Corp from in Chicago, which who I worked for, and I was there during the purchasing and shortly after. So, uh, so we actually have they, you know, with that. yeah, speaking of Bucky's, we actually have one in South Carolina, like in Florence. Your Bucky's is different than the Bucky's that was here. So it was it, it's 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 spelled it was spelled differently, a different company because one is for Buchanan Energy and it's their dog, Bucky's is a beaver, <laughs> and they're huge stores, especially ones in Texas, huge and I love to go to one. They're supposed to open one. I was Florida. at I was at Bucky's uh, this afternoon. I got gas there. Ooh. Not gonna lie. You probably you, you can <laughs> have lunch there. You can go to the you can have all. Oh, uh, actually, I did have lunch there. No, I I, I grabbed lunch there and gas. So I uh, yeah, yeah. No, it's they have it's, barbecue it's a thing. They, 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 they had jerky. They, they got have all of it, man. They have everything. 
You you could almost buy a car there, basically. <laughs> oh man, we talk about everything on this show, don't we? <laughs> Yeah, the food is actually one of, like the like the hot dogs and stuff is one of the good points about DJ and Sam's Corner. My dad would always make me a hot dog or a grilled chicken sandwich while I'm DJing. So at least he, you know he's checking on. Gotta get you, gotta get you a Chicago it. dog, though. We gotta get you a Chicago dog, dude. Yeah, I gotta get you a Chicago dog. <laughs> the food so thing is here's wild. yes or no question for tonight because I haven't got to it yet. I'm gonna hit that really quickly. So we're gonna do it very very quickly. We have a few minutes left. And since uh, Braylon's here, um, we're going to ask Braylon. We're going to start with him tonight. You know, we, we were talking a little earlier. Uh, Matt went to Nam and saw a bunch of new gear and saw the new stuff and gave his report and his opinion on, uh, on gear. Uh, here's a question to you. If you had a chance to go to any of the DJ shows like Nam or up here as Marquee, or uh, uh, the one out in New Jersey. I can't remember the name of it. Uh, uh, the one in New... Oh, God, what's the name one? I can't remember the name in New Jersey. That's in... Uh... DJ Expo. Yep, DJ Expo. That's one. That, I can't remember I can't even remember the name of that one. You can go to DJ Expo. If you had a chance to go, would you go to any of those shows? So, Bra uh, Bra uh, Braylon, would you go to one of those shows, either Marquee? It, it doesn't matter which one, but would you go to one of those shows? Yeah, hundred percent for sure. I that's actually a plan of mine. I want to do in the next year or two. I want to make it out to one of them. Um, so yeah, hundred percent. Okay, so Matt, what about you? Well, Matt, I know you're just at uh, Nam. Would mm -hmm. you go to one of the other shows? Would you come to Marquee here? Would you go to uh, another like, show? Uh, see, my thing is, I don't want to go to these little like podunk shows. Like, I want to go. I don't want to go to one that's organized by. You know, a bunch of little like DJs or whatever. Like, I want a real production. So, I mean, DJ Expo is pretty big, um, from what I've heard. I think like I I wanted to go to the photo booth one um, that they had, but like that's the thing. Like, I don't like Danny Max. I don't like his products. I, I think they're very uh, what do you call it. Even my friends when we saw their booth agreed that it's very childish looking. Uh, not childish, but very uh, tech. Chinese garbage looking is what I what he described it as. Uh, okay. And I, I think like having a show completely run by him and his minions just annoys me. Um, but I, I'd probably go to, I've heard Marquis nice. I, I'd probably go to the DJ Expo though in Atlantic City. That one seems like a fun time. Um, just uh, just for the, I, I, and that's my thing. I don't go for like the, the networking events. Like I don't go for speakers. It's like, I you can't educate me on anything like I don't already know. So uh, I just want to see the stuff. Give me the most gear. That's why I like Nam. It's all gear. There's no, I mean, there's little education pop-ups here and there and little demonstrations, but it's, it's like about the gear and the demos. So that's a long yes, but sure. <laughs> okay. DJ Bradley, what about you? Do you, are you going to come down? Are you going to come down here for Marquee or would you go to like Nam or to, uh, I'm already, I'm already going to Midwest DJs Live, and because they're actually doing a showcase of music, actual musicians, I'm bringing my mandolin to play Monday, Sunday night there. But, and I go there every year, and it's not, I mean, yes, yeah, check out some of the gear and all, but it's more the educational stuff. How can I better what I'm doing as a DJ, an MC, or entertainer? Not only how can I better what I'm doing, but how can I teach it to the crew I have under me? So with that, Marquis is up there, Vegas would be up there, or Jersey. One of the but of the three would be Marquis after Midwest DJs Live. This year I can't because I actually have a wedding on the Tuesday during Marquis. So uh, that's out. I, I want I want the money. I want to buy a house. But no, 2024, I will probably go. Okay. Hunter. What about you? I would have to say yes, but I'm not really familiar with all the DJ shows and what they, you know, what they're known for and what, you know, what they are, because I'm not a big enough DJ to go to these DJ shows. I'm not a well-known DJ. I'm not oh, a, no, you know, there's I'm, there's so many DJs there. You get lost in the crowd. It's it's, it's not about names. It's yeah. about making connections, making friends, making connections. The other part is that look at new gear, looking at stuff. And then you can have your opinion on the gear and say, hey, 
I heard the the Kraken from Base Boss and I thought it rocked. Or mm -hmm. hey, I agree with Matt. Or hey, you know what? I'm neither there or here. But that's the whole entire thing. It's for you to is is for you for you to immerse yourself into that and hear what's going on and see stuff and get those demos and say, hey, you know, I like this. I like that. That's Marquee is a smaller, uh, probably one of the smaller shows. But I think KC does a good job and he's making it bigger all the time. He keeps adding more and more to it. So I know KC. KC's a great guy. Uh, awesome, awesome DJ. And he uh, always works very hard to make the show as best he possibly can. And uh I I I think I might go to I might go to Marquee, but I knew I know people are coming into town for it, and if if, if you're coming into town for Marquee, go to Instagram, follow me, hit me up. I'm messaging. We've always uh, meet everyone up for like a dinner or like that somewhere, and have thin crust pizza because Chicago. Ever since deep dish is like that in Chicago, it's always tavern style is what most people in Chicago eat. So it's not the deep dish stuff. That's for tourists. So <laughs> with that said. I got. I got to thank also Braylon coming in here tonight, just driving Thanks. around, uh, probably coming from work and working hard and uh, <laughs> doing his uh, normal stuff and uh, coming and stopping by and saying hi. Uh, hopefully, you said you'll be back. Uh, was it uh, that next week? Week after next, I hope. Yeah, I'll be actually fully not just coming in the last ten minutes, but I'll be there for the whole show next week. Yeah, that is awesome. And next so, week, yeah, next week is the Tuesday before my birthday. That's Whoa. right. So again, uh, we'll have to sing you happy birthday then. <laughs> With that said, guys, I want to thank you all for tuning in and watching. And again, thank you all. Thank you, Matt, for giving your information about uh, the NAM show there and uh, giving your two cents on everything and uh, your walkthrough, as well as everyone on the show. And again, we can't do this without you. So make sure you like, subscribe. Follow. Make sure you follow everyone here. All the links are down below, so please do so. Hit that like button. Make sure you hit the bell for you know to get notifications. Make sure it's turned on. Any critiques, criticism, any comments, anything, put that down below down there. We hope to see you guys next time. Remember, we're here live on Twitch Tuesday nights, eight o'clock Central Time, nine o'clock Eastern Time, six o'clock Pacific Time. So make sure you tune in on Twitch. If you can't watch the live, always on YouTube the week after. Other than that, guys. Thank you all. Hunter. Peace. Peace out. Yeah. <laughs>